Okay, so here we are back in this test world where we can just see this um, setup we've been discussing on the C2 forums about a uh, an approach to cooling a reactor now that Kazakh's left us. Um, and this is what I've been kind of working with uh, just to see if it was viable. Um, the, the quick short answer is I'm not entirely sure it is, but it does look a very pretty sort of uh, setup. Um, the idea is to have some reactors here that literally just serve as coolers yeah so there's no fissionable material in them um, these are just uh, massive cooling arrays if you like um, lots of component heat vents uh, and then 60k coolant cells are slotted in there <coughs> to cool down um, because I've been sort of testing out various capacitors here, I've got six of these things, but um, dependent on your power reactor, you, you may need more or less. Um, currently, if we look at these end ones, um, this one is generally barely used. You can see some coolant cells have been put in here that need cooling, but a lot of them are, are absolutely fine. And this last one doesn't seem to be utilised at all. That's sitting there full of... Um, full of coolant cells but all will become apparent anyway when we explain how this works so over here just turn this off just to uh, reduce the noise a bit so over here we've got our main power generating reactor uh, and I've just got a very simple setup at the moment I know it's not necessarily particularly efficient or um, large <coughs> excuse me but um, it was just a test of theory really so we've got nine coolant cells and nine quad uranium cells and I've just packed up the space here uh, with with plating because I was messing around with chamber sizes um, and uh, that currently is pumping out 780 EUs a tick so not big numbers really um, and when you look at the amount of uh, effort that's had to go in, in terms of materials to build it um, you can get far more effective um, um, designs that pump out n almost as much power for far less issue right we can see this is kicking off now um, the time has kicked in and is cycling the coolant cells so what happens is this will tick nine uh, pulls on this filter and pull out nine coolant cells out of the reactor and then you'll see them getting replaced uh, so now that it's fully replaced with freshly cooled cells and then the reactor will turn back on again and that's been filled in from this regulator so what happens is those are pulled out uh, by a filter and they're slotted into the reactors whichever reactors have got slots it'll uh, it'll fill back in so they've gone into that one and that reactor will now start cooling them down over the next period of time uh, obviously if I'd not flicked the master now the um, reactor would be back on um, and then what you might have spotted is this retriever here is pulling um, nine freshly cooled cells out of the reactor so this is set up to only pull um, fully cooled cells. You'll notice there's no green bar underneath here and that's important. We don't want to be pulling out um, uncooled cells. That's pulling them out. Um, it's then, and one, one downside to a retriever is uh, you do need blue tricity to run it, so um, you could potentially do this with lots of filters on each reactor. That's um, then p piping those down to our regulator. Now the regulator is set so that it's got a requirement for nine cells in and then it will push nine cells out and that this bit fills up as they're piped across um, one thing I've noticed is that there's like an invisible buffer here that's not displayed anywhere but nine cells popped in here and then as soon as the nine was filled they disappeared into the output buffer not not this actual table here but but something not represented anywhere visibly so there are nine cells in between this and the reactor 
there's there's nine cells in the reactor and there are nine waiting to go in straight away now that's important because it means we don't we're not waiting um, for the fresh cells to be piped along here potentially running the reactor with with uh, one or more cells missing and obviously disastrous consequences um, let's run it up a bit just use up some of that some of that heat and then we'll watch what happens here so here's a state cell that's set to 160 seconds is what's currently working for me and when that comes round now it kicks off a timer hooked up with a counter set to 9 or however many cells you want to eject and that's flicking the extract and extraction filter out and it's also driving the um, retriever pulling 9 cells out of the coolers so you can see that's piping them one way this is returning them into the buffer regulator sorry and if we just watch this regulator you'll see what I mean this is slotting in all the fresh cells look already um, and the nine are going to come into here into the regulator and then when this center inventory is full they'll just all disappear but don't worry they're, they're, they've they've gone into some invisible buffer somewhere between the regulator and the reactor here we go oh or maybe not maybe it takes the reactor to be turned on yeah there we go and now they've just disappeared but they are there slotted in between the reactor and there so that's it uh, I suppose we can go over this circuit a little bit just so you can see it you've got your <coughs> excuse me your state cell that's obviously through this uh, input here is driving the turning on of the reactor uh, there's a delay uh, set by this repeater here just to make sure that the reactor doesn't turn on straight away that it's given a little bit of time to allow the, uh, the pipes to clear um, and then there's an AND gate here that just basically make, makes it turn off immediately but, but turn on only after a delay um, so that's driving that. It's also obviously when the reactor's on it, it puts the um, um, timer into a pause state, so we're not clicking the uh, clicking the filters. But when that state cell turns off, the timer is allowed to tick, and that will tick this counter up nine clock nine counts. Uh, and when the counter is counted full nine you can see the decrement is 9 here so it, it counts up by 1 up to 9 when it's clicked that 9 it will decrement 9 so go back to 0 and that will then reset the state cell and, uh, and start the timer all again this this sort of circuitry here is just really to drive my my display and uh, and, uh, and I of course uh, always have a a safety uh, uh, thermal monitor in place just to switch this off if uh, if it really does go something goes wrong. Get rid of that music. Um, and I think that's about it, really. Uh, what more do you need to see? That's about it. I shall leave it at that. So you're going through its next cycle now. Obviously you can tune all of the timings on these to be a... Uh, I found 160 is just about what's needed to... before some of the cells in here are fully... Um, you know, about to, to melt away. Um, but I'm, this reactor design I'm sure is not very good. Um, <coughs> I'm limited slightly by using the regulator which can only fill which can only fill nine cells at a time. So if, the, if you could get some more um, coolant cells in here, we'd need another regulator to fill more than nine at, at once. Um, but maybe working in multiples of nine is not a bad thing. We can just attach a regulator to another side of the reactor and, uh, and pump in lots at a time. And obviously up the ticks by the, the relevant number. So if we were using 18 cells, then pump 18 out. But um, of course, then you're going to put a much bigger demand on your cooling towers, and uh, we've got 
six of the things here uh, it's it's not really very efficient you look at the materials required to build this for the output that you get it's it's rather expensive but it looks nice I think it's a nice idea and it kind of follows the I suppose the principles of what Kazakh was about um, on the old version of IC2 anyway I'll stop warbling uh, there you go that's what I got working um, in inverted commas I'll see you later